What about Rice Miller? Do you have any dealings with Rice well, Miller? Well, Rice Miller, I, I, everybody says he's great. He is a good harmonica player, but I didn't uh, particularly like his sound. And I, if it had, if, I would have never tried to play the harmonica. Bryce Miller had been the only guy I heard. Oh, yeah. Because his voice didn't do anything for me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, um, um, and then I didn't like that particular idea that he took John Lee Williamson's name to claim fame, you know. Mm -hmm. But he was doing that. See, he knew John Lee Williamson in 1938 in Helen, Arkansas. John Lee Williamson lived in Helen, Arkansas for a couple of years after he made Good Morning School Girl. And I guess he met Rice Miller. They were buddies, drinking buddies and hard player. And Rice Miller, Sonny Boy's wife, John Lee Williamson's wife said, Rice Miller used to come to their house in Jackson, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. You know, they were buddies like, you know. So Good Morning School Girl was such a smash hit and, and harmonica was, nobody ever thought of the harmonica being played like that. And so Rice Miller, could, his name was, Rice Miller was going to the name of Boy Blue. Mm -hmm. Down south, and so Rice Miller found that he could go up to these juke joints, and they call it, they say put his name up there, Sonny Boy Williams, because John Lee Williams was so popular that he would draw the people, and so that just stuck with him, and that was his way of. Uh, uh, well, if he didn't do that, he'd have to pick cotton or something, you know. So he was playing the harmonica, and wh whose songs was he singing? He didn't have any songs. Mm -hmm. He was singing John Lee Williamson's song. Mm -hmm. And when they put him on the radio, John Lee Williams was so popular, they put him on the radio at King Biscuit, Flower, and they called him Sonny Boy Williamson. And the announcer would say, now you all go down and get a bunch of Sonny Boy's records. So whose records was they? John Lee Williamson. Because mm -hmm. Rice Miller, didn't Sonny Boy, record. didn't have any records. He didn't record till 51, did he? Or something like that? He called it 1951. Okay, sorry to interrupt there. Yeah, yeah, that's when he recorded, 1951. So, but anyway, I didn't, I didn't like his style like I did uh, John Lee Williams and Lil' Walter. Now, I, B.B. King liked to sing, all right, he said, John Lee Williamson and Lil' Walter was his favorite harmonica player. Mm -hmm. Same with me, even today. Mm -hmm. I've never heard nobody that could uh, change that. Now, I'll tell you today, the, the only harmonica player today to me that has the nuances and the all the ability that the Walter had is Kim Wilson. Mm -hmm. Kim Wilson is by far the best. He can play blues. A lot of guys, they play blues, they play the Walter song, but he can play Walter song, but it, it don't sound like he's copying Walter. Mm -hmm. Kim is, the, to my, my idea, Kim is the best harmonica player. Yeah, if anybody could take a while to play, Kim Wilson is the one. Yeah, you won't find many people who will argue that fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. No, but that's my opinion, you know. Yeah, yeah. We, we value that opinion. How about yeah. uh, Big Walter? Oh, yeah, yeah, Big Walter was dynamic, great. And you guys, you know, you lived in the same town for many, many oh, yeah. years, huh? But Big Walter, Little Walter is more melodic and creative and could solo at will, you know, spontaneously. Big Walter was a great harmonica player, but he... He didn't have that that uh, fluid motion that Walter had. Mm -hmm. you know? He was sort of like you know, and a category. But he was a great harmonica, had a big, beautiful sound, you know. <clears throat> and um, but he wasn't a singer by far. He couldn't. He didn't have the quality to be a star like Walter. Mm -hmm. He couldn't. He couldn't have did that. Because of the voice, or because of why? What because of the voice and the, and the Walter. You see. It took a lot, I mean, that song, Juke, I mean, it was, uh, Walter was young and, and exciting and had great ideas, and and he didn't have a great voice, but he had a, his voice was good. Uh, but Big Walter almost didn't have any voice at all. Mm -hmm. And his harmonica playing was beautiful. He had tone and everything, but he didn't have the dexterity that Walter had. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you guys have played shows together since Oh yeah, I knew him and yeah, yeah, we used to drink together and be around, you know, mm -hmm. oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of respect for him, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, but, but people would try to compare him with Lil Walter and I, I didn't think that he had what Lil Walter had. Mm -hmm. Are there any other players, you know, we, we, we've got our, uh, our standard players that harmonica players study and talk about, but uh, you were around 
there? Were there any other players that uh, may be obscure to the average harmonica player that you think that they should go check out? I don't know about obscure, but anyway, Junior Wales came on the scene, uh, mm -hmm. you know, before Walter made Duke, and uh, Junior was great. But see, Junior didn't write any songs. He was doing Muddy Water songs. He could do Muddy Water songs as great as uh, Muddy could. But uh, all the harp licks he got, mostly got from Lil Walter. Mm -hmm. you know? It seemed like he really came into his own in the mid 60s, like when he released Hoodoo Man. He, he kind of brought in that new style, that new sound. Both him and Cotton were going a little more on the funky side. Well, Hoodoo Man was Johnny Williamson's song. So you got to come up with something of your own, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, Lil Walter came up with something of his own. Bo Diddley, <clears throat> Chuck Berry, back in those days, B.B. King, all the guys made it off of records. Junior Wills and, Bo and uh, Buddy Guy them didn't make it off of hit records. Mm -hmm. They made it off of, see, the, the whole scene changed. <clears throat> when you were making it off of records, you were playing for black audiences. And there was no white audience. And the black audience would buy your record. And if your record sold, then you could draw a crowd in, in the clubs and you could get over it. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you didn't have anything new, it was a lot of good players. You could play like Lil Walter, play all the Walter songs, Muddy songs, and all that. But it wasn't original. You know, you could play in the clubs, but you couldn't uh, command uh, the audiences that uh, the guys that made the hit records. Mm -hmm. You know, and so Junior didn't write any songs. Uh, I think he wrote one song, which "Come On in His House," which was a great song. Junior was a dynamic singer and a great harp player, but you had to have something of your own. You had to be creative of your own, you know. Otherwise, you know, he, that's why he didn't record for Chess or some of those guys, because he didn't have any material. See, they were at that time they were looking for single records, and they were looking for hit records. And you had to come up with something different. Nobody ever came up with nothing like Juke. So that's the way it was.